this is part two of my thoughts regarding um, the history of uh, black people in the United States, uh, black Americans. And um, I've had my eyes opened. A lot of people would say, oh, he's all woke now. Um, uh, just in the last, uh, let's see, three or four years. Um, about history and some of that is from um, uh, going to uh, readings of history, of uh, black history readings, but also um, there's a couple of books that I've read most of. This one is called The New Jim Crow. It's by Michelle Alexander. Now this is uh, this came out in 2010, I believe, and then it has been revised. So there's a revised New Jim Crow, and I'll talk about that. This one is called White Rage, and I know it'll push a lot of buttons, just the title. I have a friend who wouldn't even think about reading it because it starts with that title, White Rage. White Rage is kind of the answer to a book, I think, that came out called Black Rage, and um and truthfully, I haven't read Black Rage, but I read this book, most of this book, and it's controversial to some. I can see why it might push some buttons, but the fact is, it's not really. It's incredibly well-documented history of black people in the United States and what has happened several times. So after Reconstruction, we, after the Civil War, there was Reconstruction, and black people saw some advancements. And then, as I discussed in the previous video, uh, after those advancements came, then there was pushback by the, pe the white people who were once in charge became in charge again, and uh, there was pushback in the, uh, with black codes and later with Jim Crow. Um, but this is a really good book. It's been, there's lots of, you know, the person has done lots of research. And so one of the things it points out is what was called the Great Migration. Um, around the time of World War I, uh, 1918, a lot of black Americans realized that they hoped they could do better by going north. And some of them came west to Arizona, which is where I live. But in any case, uh, during the Great Migration, black people went uh, went north, hoping for better wages and a better life. And um, unfortunately, they ran into white people who didn't like, you know, sharing the workplace. They they uh, because some white. This is the hypothesis: is that some white people, all they have is their feeling of superiority to black people. And so if a black person gets the same job, uh, at least this is the hypothesis, is that uh, black people feel insulted or angry and then they react by pushing down, uh, pushing down the black people. So that apparently occurred when black people moved north and uh, that's talked about in this White Rage book. It's, the White Rage is written by Carol Anderson. And people will say, oh, it's so um, controversial. I don't think it is. She, uh, I'm pretty sure she touches on, she makes pretty good point in each chapter about what happened. So uh, Brown versus Board of Education was an advancement for black people that occurred in 1952, where uh, it was where obviously segregation wasn't working. And in Kansas, um, the um, Supreme Court said that segregation wasn't working and that black uh, students should be allowed in white schools, desegregation. So unfortunately, this book talks about how there was backlash. White rage caused backlash to uh, integrating the schools. And so, um, again, read it. Don't judge it until you've read it. And I think you learn from it whether the hypothesis, whether you get to the end and you say, well, that hypothesis is wrong. I don't know. She has done her the homework. 
obviously. So then there's a chapter after that. There's a chapter about uh, Jim Crow. Um, and I believe there's a chapter about what happened, um, well, the civil rights movement and the backlash to the civil rights movement. Um, during the 1970s, this terrible thing happened. And I will, uh, is that pol politicians and realized that if black people are going to be voting, a lot of politicians were afraid they would be voted out of office. And they, uh, and so they started what was, uh, Richard Nixon in particular, started what was called a war on drugs, the war on drugs. Um, and rewards went to the local police if they made a lot of drug busts. Well, the rewards weren't improved. The rewards didn't say to bust the white dealers, bust the white, uh, bust all, arrest all those people who are making lots of money at drugs. What they did was they, you know, they could get their government rewards in the war on drugs by busting a lot of low-level dealers the, and uh, users. And those were African-American and many of those were African-American. And then while in the back, a lot of people don't think of themselves as prejudiced, but if television, if watching television makes you think that all the people using drugs and dealing drugs are black, and then lots of black men are being arrested and thrown in jail for drug offenses, then uh, you might vote for the people in charge because they're having a successful war on drugs. Um, and you might not realize what you're voting for is really, um, is really the um, arrest of lots of black people who scare you because maybe you've had no exposure to black Americans and you're xenophobic or something, or just plain racist. Anyway, the new Jim Crow, by Michelle Alexander covers this whole idea that the politicians found a way to neutralize the black vote uh, one way by arresting lots of black men. And one of the sad things they did was um, in this war on drugs where the penalties for dealing drugs and using drugs were maybe a year or something in the name of defeating this, uh, uh, winning this war on drugs, there were um, the amount of time that people served for drug offenses became uh, incredibly increased so that these uh, low level offenders of uh, drug dealing and drug and drug use. And in fact, you know, we understand it's terrible. It's bad. The drugs have had a bad influence on our society. But the fact is, it's been used by politicians who claim they're going to conduct this war on drugs. And that became kind of code for, uh, we're going to, we're going to save you from all these black people who are doing drugs. And uh, so our prisons filled up with black Americans and they had, while they're in prison, they had no, they were not, they lost their voting rights. So this successfully, the whole war on drugs led to successful neutralization of the black vote or not completely neutralization, but certainly um, uh, neutralized the threat. Um, and so the new Jim Crow was about this putting a lot of black Americans in jail for a long time for drug offenses uh, and the underlying motivation for why it was actually being done. So that's a really good book. Um, and so if you get a chance to read it, but if you want to understand black history, as part of it is reading the new Jim Crow and then also White Rage by Carol Anderson. 
and doing your own thinking. You may disagree, but it's, it's important to do the read and understand, and along the way you will pick up on some of the bad things that happened. So we had the civil rights movement, and that helped with voting rights. And um, we've uh, so the civil rights movement had some positive effect. And we have laws against discrimination in the workplace. I believe we have laws against discrimination in in uh, uh, in housing and and um, education. So these are good things. Now. There are arguments to be made, but the fact is, it's important to understand black history. So we had um, we had Reconstruction that went bad. Then there was this great migration. And what black people found when they went north and also west was that they were often um, discriminated against and received lower pay and were expected to live in the impoverished parts of town. And if they didn't live in the impoverished parts of town, if they moved to the white neighborhood, they would be harassed or worse. And so, uh, so that was the great migration. The civil rights movement had some success, um, uh, followed by the new Jim Crow effect. Um, it's important to know the history of the United States. Um, it's important when you see, once in a while, maybe you see a black person doing something that you think rubs you the wrong way. But I want you to keep in mind, if you've worked in healthcare as I have, and especially if you've been in a hospital for any period of time, or if you've worked in a care centers, there are, uh, black Americans are all over taking care of the elderly, working as nurses and nursing assistants and caring for Americans. You have to tune out individual behavior sometimes in the same way that, uh, you know, you'll see a white person do something criminal, but the fact is you understand that most white people are not criminal. Uh, you, it's important for a white person to be able to see black people, um, to see if you see an episode of a black person um, maybe committing a crime on television or something. You, you know, you need to be able to keep in mind that there are millions and millions of black Americans who are doing hard work every day, who are trying to do their best, who are going to school to have advancement, who care about the country. And I think the country is improving. It's, if I were a black person, I'd, I would think it's improving awfully slowly. But uh, please continue and check out these books, The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander and White Rage by Carol uh, Anderson. I noticed White Rage on the shelf at Target in the book section at one point. And that made me want to get a copy of it. But I went back to Target and I couldn't find it on the shelf anymore. So I'm not sure um, whether there was blowback there. Black history is very important. That's the bottom line. It's been neglected and therefore it needs to be focused on. And if you, you should read it, things before you decide. It's important to read books and uh, look at the curriculum in schools before you decide that the curriculum is somehow subversive or something. Anyway, be good. Um, thank you for listening. Goodbye.